Hey YouTube, what's up? Ryan Knows Tech here from techinform.us and today's video is another Photoshop tutorial. Did one of these week, 10 days ago, maybe two weeks ago. Seemed to be pretty good, a lot of people asked for more. So this time it's about selective coloring. The art of selective coloring is uh, something I've recently learned how to do. It's really quite easy. Um, and it really brings a nice effect. So we're going to be using Adobe Photoshop CS4 Extended here. Um, I believe it works the same way in CS3, and I've only used CS5 a handful of times. So uh, try it or something similar if you're using a different version than CS4. Um, as far as elements goes, I know people ask Adobe Photoshop Elements. It's kind of different. I really don't like elements, but you could probably figure out how to do it. So we're going to go ahead and go ahead and open this document on my desktop here. This is a Ferrari in front of a restaurant here in town. And selective coloring, if you're uh, not familiar with its definition, let's say you want your foreground item, otherwise known as the Ferrari, to be in color and the rest of the rest of the picture, the, the Audi in the background, the building, the grass, the parking lot, to be in black and white. That'll really make the car stand out. It's a nice effect. It's probably an easier way to do this, but you know me. Uh, we're not going to use it. Back over here to Photoshop. We're going to open that document. And there it is. So your first step, obviously, unlock your background. Right-hand click it. Duplicate your layer. Okay, now you want to go to Layer new adjustment layer hue slash slash saturation so layer new adjustment layer hue slash saturation click on that okay now over here you want to bring your saturation of this layer to zero notice that changes your whole picture to black and white next step over in your toolbar select your eraser tool make sure your uh, foreground color is black here select your brush and uh, actually, I think you may want white as your foreground color. There we go. White is your foreground color to uh, erase there, uh, erase this first layer and bring your color back. So I'm going to change my brush here. 300 pixels is not detailed enough. I'm going to go down to 100 pixels. Here it is. And now I can spend some time painting over this picture. I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done. OK, so you can see. Um, I painted the color back on, but you can also see near the back of the car, I was really, really messy back there. It's not at all uh, a clean, clean line between the back of the car and that grass. So we'll go ahead and punch uh, the option key, and uh, we can use uh, the scroll bar on the mouse to zoom in back there. Now, change your foreground color to black. I'm going to make my brush a little smaller here. How about 35 pixels? And I can go around. I'd probably want to zoom in more if I were really going to try to save this document and use it somewhere. And uh, painting it over with black, your eraser tool with black as your foreground color is going to eliminate that color. Notice as I make a line right through the car. Command Z to undo that. So that's the basics of selective coloring. You can do more. Um, you can do it different ways by turning off different channels. Uh, a lot of times that really doesn't give the effect you want. So I find this to be relatively easy unless you have an incredibly detailed um, picture that you want to make uh, the colors and then your foreground is going to be black and white. That just gets too complicated to go in and use a really small uh, brush in terms of pixels. So pretty simple. I think it's a pretty cool effect. Um, most of you may know I did that with my car, made a background of it in one of my previous videos. I think this is it here. The M5 uh, wheels are blue, so I need to go through and fix that, but the whole picture was kind of tinted blue before. So it takes a little bit of time. Nice effect. Uh, hope you learned something here. If you didn't, uh, leave me a comment. I'll try to do better next time. But if you did, if you have any questions, also leave me a comment. Definitely uh, look forward to reading and responding to those. A couple questions I had this afternoon, this evening. Uh, the live shows, I try to do them every Tuesday night, but at this time of the year, I've just got back to school. My house is completely torn apart. We're having all this work done. Um, I had to get to my job. It's amazingly busy. So uh, may, a couple more times this fall, I may miss a show. But I should be back Tuesday night. And then tomorrow night, I'd like to make tomorrow night, because tomorrow is September 1st. Uh, by the time you're watching this, it'll probably be the 1st or the 2nd. And that's when Apple's new iPods and whatever they are going to release on this event will come out. So I'll try to do an event, or I'll try to host a show. Uh, probably 7, 8 o'clock. Follow my Twitter, twitter.com slash Schultz. Links down below um, to, to watch that show. 
We'll talk about it there again. I apologize for the last two weeks I haven't made it. Anyways, normal show times are Tuesday night from 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Ustream.tv slash Tech Inform Us. Uh, Tech Inform Us, if you're just new, be sure to check it out. It's our website, technology blog. Uh, one thing I'd like to touch on here, I'm going to be covering the content exclusively uh, that Apple is going to be doing tomorrow. So if you were planning on writing a post, here's what they did. Love the thought. Um, you could write a really detailed post about maybe uh, one event, one uh, product release. But honestly, I, I think um, I'm going to go through and write uh, the, the featured article about the content. We just don't need a million articles about the same thing. So thanks for understanding there. Again, website, techinform.us. All the information is down in the link below. And I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Please subscribe on the way out. Bye.